Buen día. Los invito a tomar asiento, que vamos a ir comenzando con la ceremonia de inauguración. Ricky, Ricky. Bueno, muy bien. Buenos días a todos. Sean muy bienvenidos. Good morning, everyone. Be welcome to the inauguration in the ACP seminar in this beautiful place, Antigua. It's the challenges and the I invite everyone to start standing on your feet because we're going to start by singing Guatemala's national anthem. Guatemala, 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 Guatem
A continuación, voy a presentar. I'm going to present distinguished members of our table today. Dr. Marco Palacio, president of the seminary and vice president too of the uh, of ACP. Dr. Manuel Barte Barrera, president of civil chamber and vocal ten of the uh, Supreme Justice Court in Guatemala. Dr. Luis Alejandro Enriquez, president of ACP. We also want to thank especially the representatives of our host country, Dr. Claudia Lucrecia Paredes Castañeda. It's vocal six of the Justice Court in Guatemala, Dr. Mejia Mendez from the Supreme Court in Guatemala also. Dr. Sara Larios is the main person in the uh, registry of intellectual property in Guatemala. Also, especially, I'm going to thank, without naming each one of them, all of the ex-presidents of ACP, members of the host committee. You can see all of the names on the screen, all of the delegates from our association, president, secretaries, coordinators, and members of committees work teams and commissions, partners of the CP, general public, ladies and gentlemen, be all of you welcome. Thank you for being here. Also, as usual, we thank especially our sponsors that you're going to be able to see on this video that we're going to present. We want to thank each one of the media sponsors that are here in this event with us. Institutional sponsors, Arnold Schiff from the United States, Barlow Abib from Peru, Bicia and B, Mr. Real Coca and Mr. Real from Mexico, Servieri Monsuarez from Uruguay, Danaman Simpson from Brazil, Goodrich Rico and Associates, Mexico, Gumba Pacinius and Texera, Brazil. Ideas, IPS, Costa Rica. Olarte Mora and Associates from Colombia. Palacios Lawyers from Guatemala. Golden Sponsors, Arias. Viteria Viteri. From Academia, our sponsors, University of New Hampshire, an exposition a business Castell Association who is exposing a VPI. Our media sponsors, Lex Latmark, Global IP Matrix, the patent lawyer, the trademark lawyer, women's IP word. We're also going to share um, a video from the from, from some greetings that we're receiving. And it is a great honor for me to join you today virtually for this exciting seminar focused on artificial intelligence. ACP and the UIPO have a long-standing relationship where we work to improve the global IP ecosystem. Together, we make it more transparent, consistent, and predictable for our users across the world. And we greatly value the voice of ACP as a member, an active member of the UIPO user group. In response to the question of your event, coexistence or collision, I am clearly on the sides of coexistence. When it comes to new technologies like artificial intelligence, we simply don't have a choice. It is here and we must embrace these new ways of working. I believe these technologies have great potential to help users of the IP system and increase productivity of our organizations, making our operations more efficient, effective and predictable. But we can already see that AI and other emerging technologies pose challenges to society, including the intellectual property system. For example, generative AI systems are testing the limits of copyright protection and generating new questions in the realm of patents. One thing is clear. I believe in creating a partnership between humans and technology, but humans must always remain at the center of decision making. It is very important to be able to use the best and the most modern technology, but it's crucial that our people have the skills necessary 
to operate it to the fullest extent and that we use the technology in a responsible, ethical and legal way. Today, at the UIPO, we have integrated artificial intelligence technology in more than 12 tools that we use internally. And as we develop our UIPO Strategic Plan 2030, which will be adopted later this year, AI and emerging technologies will play a key role. I am looking very much forward to hearing the insights from your debates and welcome the chance to exchange views on AI, emerging technologies and our IP system more broadly in the months to come. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor to have a minute of your time and I wish you all an excellent and insightful event. Thank you. Okay, this was the video that we had. So I invite Dr. Marco Palacios to come and give us his welcome words. Buenos días a todos, a todas. Bienvenido. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this beautiful city of Antigua, Guatemala. And this seminar that is presented with a very entertaining agenda that surely will challenge us intellectually and even emotionally. It is for me a privilege on behalf of all of Guatemalans, members of ACP, and particularly the members of the um, host committee to receive everyone in this beautiful and historical city of Antigua Guatemala. And together with authorities from the Justice Department of Guatemala, understanding that this is important for, they have an important role on the definition of many of the topics that are building social peace and those topics that we're going to discuss in these two days are surely aspects that are going to get to the hands and heads of our judges to m be able to make to take decisions on these challenges and how they apply in our society. So the same way, I want to welcome um, people from the Supreme Court, Justice Supreme Court, that are here today. You have already been presented by Martin, and I don't want to extend myself again on this, and I want to be able to advance in our agenda, but I want to recognize the effort to mobilize from Guatemala City to here to be here with us. Thank you very much. This city of Antigua Guatemala, throughout the walls, the gravel stone roads and beautiful balconies, those doors that have been made with exquisite details with churches and places that are have been hundreds of years, tells us a story of perseverance, of audacity and hope, a testimony also of 500 years of history the ability of adaptation, the ability of a city and a society that now shines the same way as it did in its creation. And the city also, there is a third university of the Spanish kingdom back then, the fourth university uh, founded in the American continent, and it's the University of San Carlos of Borromeo. Antigua, faced throughout history, natural disasters, eruptions, earthquakes, and other series of challenges that interestingly ha haven't stopped it. And now it allows us after 500 years of being here to be here enjoying it and all of this and even more with a natural environment with three volcanoes, with mountains, hills, and it makes Antigua Guatemala the perfect place to develop this seminar where we are going to talk about an innov innovative topic and very open to uncertainty and bias. And I was saying that this city in consequence is a perfect place because it shows us 
how, even though there have been so many challenges, you can thrive and adapt and continue advancing without um, resigning to the essence. So I think artificial intelligence, it's presenting those dilemmas. And while being here, history with the immediate present and future are going to give us the possibility to discuss some of these very interesting topics. This seminar in Antiguatemala is approaching artificial intelligence. But in a very particular way, we're going to focus on generative artificial intelligence. This is a technological reality that it's moving us from our comfort zone. And at the same time, it's allowing us to have different types of comfort. However, these tools are so great and it's giving us amazing abilities to, to have, but we need to know and apply these tools in a, the right way. Certainly, throughout these two days of discussion, the discussion and the debate, we're going to take from this exercise many elements to be able to grow. Coexistence or collision, effectively, the title of our seminar is presenting to us what what are we going to do to find a best way to use artificial intelligence. We have experts who are going to be presenting these topics, who have technical, practical, they are specialized. One, one of the, the panelists, I'm going to steal a, a phrase from him, tells me after meeting other speakers, it tells me, hey, a CP has concentrated in Antiguatemala, a um, tiny Silicon Valley. You're going to have discussions that are so complex throughout different applications that it's, it's hard to see elsewhere about this topic. So I think that should motivate us that we did a, a great job identifying who could we bring and offer with this seminar. The program, I'm not going to talk about it in detail, but it's going to take us in a story, in a narrative that is going to start talking about artificial intelligence, where we are, where are we going to, to then go a little bit deeper on how does it work, especially the generative artificial intelligence that it's maybe, or without the maybe, it is what is um, making a greater disruption and it's important to be able to understand how this is developing then we're going to start with a practical topic talking about uh, intellectual property uh, and generative uh, intelligence patents and intelligence in artificial intelligence generative and artificial intelligence and then we're gonna talk about sensitive topics like security and ethics in artificial intelligence and its usage so all of these efforts have been able because of a lot of people working and adding up to be able to present this seminar. I've had the highest honor to be assigned as the president of the host committee for this seminar. It's a privilege that has allowed me above all to get closer and share with my colleagues who are Guatemalan and are part of a CP. It's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. And I am so proud of being part of this national team that has brought us all here to this event that we are inaugurating. This host committee has two committees that you could see the names with Martin's presentation that have been working really hard and constant to make this possible in our operation in Guatemala. Our Academia Committee it has, was led by Yvonne Hernandez and the Logistic Committee by Silvia Ruiz. I want to thank them both, your follow-up, your hard work, and the coordination of the teams. At the same time, our delegates, Cristina Omaña, Gabriela Gandara, have been the engine that has been 
moving all things along with all the members of ACP Guatemala. I cannot mention all the names, but I can recognize this in public, that each one of these Guatemalans with passion and a lot of illusion are getting involved as a host committee. We've been able to work on this process and recognize that without this work, we will hardly be able to have this result. I want to also thank the teams of Perspective, led brightly by Veronica Serkovic, the Pamela Morales from KI Events Guatemala, who have been a, an essential piece to work with the host committee in those details that are allowing us for you as a, as a national team to have a, an event to begin with social celebrations. We had one yesterday in Capuchinas from all of the colleagues that are here. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. And I'm gonna continue with our program. I wanna thank you again and all of you that are making this possible, this event possible and make it happen. The participation of each of the members as a CP motivates us and helps us find new horizons to have new roads, build new roads to be able to create a process of updating and, and strengthening our knowledge on these topics that are so important as intellectual property. And I want to also tell you, but you're going to discover it, but it, within this m tiny Silicon Valley that we have here, there is a person who work with Apple um, with the development of the uh, first Macintosh. And this person is still connected with technology and has been working with this. So I invite you to discover who this person is and get closer and hear about uh, the first, how it was developed, the first Macintosh. So to my dear friends and colleagues and brothers of the executive committee, thank you again for all the work and the effort to the president of our association, Andrea Enriquez, together with the trust that you gave to Guatemala and to our local team. To all of you, welcome. And thank you very much for being in Anti-Guatemala. Thank you, Marco. I want to thank you publicly for the great job of coordination and the excellent academia program that we have now. I want to invite Dr. Manuel Duarte with a brief words, the president of the civil chamber and, the, and, and also part of the Supreme Court, what about Supreme Justice Court. Good morning, everyone. It's a great honor to me to be able to talk to you, to stand before you this morning. All of you professionals of rights and who dedicate yourselves in the jurisdiction discipline of intellectual property. And I say this out of conviction and out of uh, personal experience because I had the great opportunity to get into intellectual property that we started doing the first steps to renew legislation and to be able to add up my experience in this topic in the service of the Guatemala State. Also, to lead the Office of Intellectual Property in my country. That's why I underline this discipline that it's so passionate and it's so good as part of my life and it's engraved in my heart. I want to start thanking the invitation extended to be part of this event from the executive committee of ACP, especially from the president Luis Alejandro Enriquez. 
and to be able to talk to you in the opening of the seminar. Coexistence or collision challenges and opportunities in the artificial intelligence era. Artificial intelligence is presented as a technology that al al allows machines make assignments that don't need human intelligence to do. Nowadays, artificial intelligence is being used every time more and more in different areas, including uh, development of digital content and creation of work. This new reality is transforming a lot of aspects of our lives, starting from our homes, the ways that we work, the activities in academia, the research, and also the taking advantage of so many technological tools that we have. We experience without any complication artificial intelligence in the search of internet, in the usage of computers, with recognition of voice, or even a few years ago, we started with the chess game that allowed us to have entertainment. But every time it's generalized more in all of the aspects, in vehicles, in robots, in medicine, and everything related to health, the repercussions are significant are meaningful for society since artificial intelligence is now in charge of many assignments that before or recently were still done by humans. Undoubtedly, this has generated questions and worries about how artificial intelligence affects intellectual property and how this has to be adapted to new reality. Those understandings on different categories patents, designs, um, uh, and others. And this is why we affirm that artificial intelligence has opened new doors of opportunities, but also presents many challenges and questions about titles and protection of intellectual property rights. This colonial um, city is now the, uh, the scenery where speakers, leaders of the industry, and experts in intellectual property are gathered together in an ACP seminar to be able to approach this uh, topic. I am sure that discussions are going to be developed in high-level um, conversations about the challenges in how the regulatory framework of intellectual property has to transform to be able to respond in an adequate way to um, innovation and in technological improvement that will present better development um, Empo uh, economic empowerment for our countries. I want to take advantage of this opportunity to to tell a CP um, team together with other members of the um, Justice Department. I want to tell you that as as part of the civil chamber of the Justice uh, Guatemala Court. We want to continue working together. We have a cooperation agreement, and I want to assure you that we're going to be able to develop activities uh, to train all of our functionaries, judges, um, and the same way as we expressed uh, in your recent visit to the Supreme Court. I want to finish telling all of you Guatemalans and non-Guatemalans who are part of this event that nothing like this has happened before. I want to welcome you to our country, to this beautiful colonial city of Antigua, and express how we know that this is going to be an unforgettable experience, what you're going to take back with you at the end of this event and your stay here in Antigua, Guatemala. Thank you so much.
Muchas gracias. Thank you. Before the words of Luis Enrique, I want to show you um, a video to welcome you and to talk about the topics that we're going to discuss. Estamos presenciando un nuevo We're witnessing a new um, sunrise. Artificial intelligence presents a change of paradigms that hasn't happened before. Adaptation and innovation are necessary to be able to face uh, the challenges of a world that is constantly evolving, a world that is changing before our, uh, before our eyes every day. The exponential growth of technology in the last 50 years has been amazing and transformative in practically every aspect of uh, human life. This growth has also presented social and ethical challenges like privacy of data, um, the lack of equality in um, digital equality, and the big gap in development. The speed of these changes has challenged us to be on avant-garde, not only contemplating evolution, but also being part of it. Reinventing ourselves constantly with a clear vision of the future, adopting new tools and strategies to be able to face these changes with efficiency. To face the future of artificial intelligence needs a holistic and collaborative um, approach, taking in consideration political ethics and other areas. In a CP, we're committed to face these challenges that the artificial intelligence present in the, as in the legal aspect. Having the light of curiosity on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eva. And I'm not a real person, but I represent a very exciting development in the generative artificial intelligence. I'm here to be sharing some information with you. During this event, we're going to explore how artificial intelligence, like me, are transforming different aspects of creativity and creating content. The video that you saw was created in different, uh, with different inter artificial intelligence. All of it led by human intelligence. One of the things that we're gonna see is how this collaboration will e evolve in the future. What are the ethical and legal things that we need to consider throughout this journey? And without further words, I welcome you to ACIPI La Antigua. Now, I'm going to welcome our president, Luis Enriquez. Okay, Martin, if you allow me, I'm going to ask Luis Enriquez to come to, with us to the stage. Hi, Luis. We welcome you. Well, artificial intelligence already took my place as, <laughs> as presenter, and I'm going to gladly give it my work as a secretary if it needs it. Hi, Eva. Hey. It's nice meeting you. After so long and efforts, we're finally here. It's a pleasure, Luis. I'm very excited to be here and participate in this wonderful seminar in the magic city of Antigua, Guatemala. Eva, it's a pleasure to meet you. Antigua is giving us its magic, and you're giving a touch of technology that is fascinating. Tell, tell us more about yourself. Yes. Of course, Luis. As I mentioned, I am an artificial intelligence designed to assist and enrich the experience of events like this. I work through algorithms and processing of natural language, so it allows me to be able to interact in a great way. Spectacular. I'm sure that everyone here are as impressed as I am. This chat with you is like getting in science fiction. 
I hope you enjoy and have fun the same as we will. Of course, Luis, avatars from artificial intelligence, thanks to the adaptation abilities that we have, we give a very unique and highly personalized experience. We can be virtual tutors, medical assistants, giving emotional and social um, assistance. We can ensure anonymity and discretion. And in the future, we're going to be able to improve the quality of life to people to be able to give interactive and effective experience in many, many areas. I'm so happy to be here. Wow, Eva, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to see how you're going to transform the experience of this seminar. Is there anything you want to say to close? Yes, Luis. I want to encourage everyone to take advantage of this seminar and this city. The technology is here to improve our lives and open new possibilities. Eva, I'm sure that with your energy, this seminar is going to be unforget unforgettable. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. And thank you to everyone for this space. We're going to see each other again. As you can see, it's been very exciting to interact with Eva. And I'm very excited to be here. If I were to start talking about what I feel, it could be hours. So I'm just going to follow the script. So after meeting Eva, it's going to be one of our hosts in during this seminar. I want to welcome the president of the Civil Chamber of uh, Supreme Court Justice Court, Dr. Manuel Duarte Barrera, the president of the host committee, Marco Palacios, other authorities that are here today, and all of you colleagues and friends. Be all of you welcome to Antigua the very noble and loyal city of Santiago de los Caballeros de Guatemala, a city that is um, keeping in the corners of its colonial arch architecture, important part of the story of this country. We are gathered here to begin with our first academia, academia event. This seminar is going to talk about one of the most exciting and also challenging topics of our times, intel artificial intelligence and intellectual property. So in a world where artificial intelligence is advancing so rapidly, going through so many industries, it is important to be, it is crucial to, to be aware of the advances and how this can affect intellectual property. We hope that the topics that we have picked meets your expectations and exceeds them and allows us to give a meaningful uh, impact in your lives when it comes to artificial intelligence. Aside from the presentations, we're also going to have social gatherings and we're going to have a, a party that is um, hosted by Guatemalans and I want you to give them a round of applause. The organization and the work done by them has been flawless. I also want to share with you a summary of the activities that have been done with by locals, special committees, uh, academia, CP, RCP program during this first six months of this um, of this year. Within the axis of position, positioning in the region, we started contacting authorities, um, business chambers, associations, universities, and centers of development. To be able to accomplish that, our local T 
team have been the key. We have been working together to extend the knowledge of what a CP is doing and how to protect intellectual property. Property. In the first trimester, we had the first regional visit in Chile, Peru, and Ecuador. This trip has strengthened our um, work with local and private government authorities sharing the successes and challenges that are happening in these countries in the matter of intellectual property. And it also has allowed us to create a plan that is specific to each country and will be implemented in the next two years. This plan is already in the work as part of the work with um, national associations. We work with the ASPI. Um, summit in Brazil. We talk about a sustainable future. We also participated in the regional encounter of Abdisur in Brazil, where we can do we could do networking and other things. The positioning of a CP also means improving our relationship with multinationals organizations and with a university. Together with ENCA and the Andina Association, we were part of the Latin American Mood Court on intellectual property. And each year, we have new teams of different universities in the region. We also participated of the annual um, conference in INTA last month in Atlanta where we had institutional precedents and support for, from our, our associate. With BICT and IBPI, we had some webinars through, and we talked about sustainability and intellectual property. This also adds up with the academia initiatives that we have and with two professors that are developing uh, different um, classes. We also participated in the IPLA uh, summit in Puerto Rico. Also in our relationship with uh, uh, multidisciplinary organizations, we're part of the World Organization of Intellectual Property, especially in the SSD when we talked about uh, Peru and their protection of the country brand. We also were part of different um, meetings online. We were also part of a WIPO that had focus groups and different meetings where we discuss and share the better practices of intellectual property. As part of our agenda in Quito, we gave a recognition uh, for the Department of Justice um, in their 45 years of um, working. We also talk about the new um, additions of our online um, library. We also have strengthened our relationships with IPKey. They invite us to be part of their seminar in Chile in April and also an event in Bogota the last, May, the last May. We also were part of CELA, having a meeting in their headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. And this intergovernmental uh, entity. We also had some visits in Peru with the general secretary of the Andina community and we're going to start working with him with education and training. When we talk about judicial academias, I'm happy to share about the following um, trainings that we're going to work with judges in Ecuador, in Chile, and in Peru. We're working together with them on the different trainings that we're going to develop. Also, our strengthening with universities. When I talk, we, we work with uh, the New Hampshire uh, University, we have new scholarships, and we want to thank the judges that helped us in this process and congratulate those of you who were awarded in this edition because of the quality 
of work presented. And we, we hope you are successful in everything you do. I also want to highlight that we're going to start um, a state that we're going to give some summer courses in the New Hampshire uh, University. Fabrizio Mona is going to be representing us as an invited professor for this program. To close this first pillar of positioning in the region, I want to highlight how we work with our national partners and how on April 26 we commemorated the World Day of Intellectual Property and it showed how the voice of uh, intellectual property is in the region. In Ecuador, we had two meetings in collaboration with two different areas. In Honduras, we had um, a meeting with the HEP. In Bolivia, we also had a meeting uh, hosted by the intellectual property um, team, same as in Paraguay. In Puerto Rico, we organized a um, meeting with the faculty of law school. And in Venezuela, I had the honor to participate in the first encounter of intellectual property for the transformation of the national commerce. We also had another activity organized with another two universities and another two organizations and also in the university central university in venezuela the second pillar is the strengthening of programs this is a fundamental axis for the strengthening of our association we strongly believe that the development of programs is key to be able to accomplish our purpose to be able to be updated to what we're doing. So the academia is the epicenter of knowledge that we have experts and professionals to share experiences and deepen um, important topics. So one very important thing is that we had a meeting to talk about what is the first activity that we're gonna do in the first semester of 2025, which is gonna be um, with judges. We also launched two classes that are gonna be important and there was a high participation and the f for the first time has had interpretations for English and Portuguese. We wanna recognize publicly the coordinators of these two classes because of the development of the content and the participation throughout the development of it. So in our commitment with uh, environment, we did a second um, round of, um, for second year, we did it in a regional way, and it was through a Cipi Verde. And may us not forget about our entrepreneurs through a Cipi Emprende. We're gonna give in entrepreneurs uh, important knowledge from meetings, virtual events. We're supporting entrepreneurs in each part of their journey. Also, a CP Fit. We're excited to share with you that to be able to train in a more personalized way and very specific way, we're going to have our first running tour. So, you're going to choose if you want to run, you want to walk, and how long you want to do it. Trying to improve uh, and encourage healthy ways of living for our partners. So, in a CB Pro, there were trainings for entrepreneurs. We talk about um, the benefits of registering your brand. Aside from this, we added two new programs, a CP Mentorship and a CP Youth. With a CP Mentorship, there are mentors that are walking alongside with our members. And with a CP Hoven, a CP Youth, it's a um, place where youth who want to develop a career in a CP and take advantage of the tools that a CP has, they can develop with them. Finally, when it comes about programs, 
I want to highlight our SCP clubs that we started during the time that we were not allowed to go out during COVID, but has still kept on going. So we are strengthening friendship and professional development. Also, to another pillar that it's important, it's how to strengthen our um, organization. We have groups of work that are continuing trying to develop um, uh, knowledge and inter interactive um, map. And together with the Andina University, we're developing this. We're also developing this study of geographical uh, indications and the impact in economy. A research that we are doing research in the field right now. We're also working about different restrictions on different regions in different topics in our region. We also have commissions that are part of this strengthening. We want to highlight the uh, participation in the committee of country brand. And we have news. We created a um, commission from international treaties by two ex-presidents, former president of OSCP. Committees are the ceilings of initiatives, and we're so grateful for all of the committees that have been meeting permanently and have started with their um, work plans. In this first semester, we highlight the work of our technology committee. Competence, author rights, entertaining, and equity. They had webinars and podcasts going on. The Committee of Social Action launched a campaign of donating your shoes and leaving a mark. And this is going to be, it's going to start here in Antigua. The Committee of Fashion started an agreement with um, the University of Argentina. Also, our committees and work um, teams in, C in a CP, we're gonna, we have been working in the improvement of our publications. We have been publishing our um, newsletter, our um, magazine, and we're inviting our associates to collaborate with um, the writings. We also have a technological area in our website so they can register it there. We have strengthened our communications um, team by hiring an expert. Um, so our growth in social media is notable. We're now in the process of redesigning our website to make it more intuitive and accessible. We have improved a pilot plan on our communications in the WhatsApp. Our objective is to be able to extend it to everyone. We're starting here in Antigua right now to be able to keep you updated with all the things that are happening at CP. To close this year is very special for CP. We're celebrating our 60th anniversary as an institution, and we have started our celebrations with our logo that is going to be with us throughout 2024. On April 16th, we gave a recognition to our founders and all of the people who have been part of our story. Thank you very much to all of you who presented your greetings, you sent videos, members of the executive committees, partners. We, we will continue sharing those greetings to everyone. Thank you to the 56 new associates who have joined at CP. This shows that we are a strong, a strong uh, corporation, but we are also a strong team, but we're also a family. Come alongside so we can close with the event at the end of the year. Thank you for being here with us in Antigua, and we expect you in Panama.
Well, I confess that the hardest thing about this six months is to put all of this in 15 minutes. So I want to give you, I want to ask you to give a big round of applause to everybody who has been involved and make this happen. As you could see in the video, we have a goal. Our goal is to strengthen our leadership and to promote intellectual property as the right way to have a sustainable impact in the cultural, social, and economic development in the region. I close up thanking again to the ACP Guatemalan team for your support and organization for this seminar. Also the speakers for your generosity to share with us all of your knowledge and thanks especially the assistance of all of you. Without any further, I leave you with Diego Fernandez, our keynote speaker, where we're gonna navigate this new territory of artificial intelligence and what are implications this have in our society. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bueno, si, si Eva no me vuelve a interrumpir y mientras suben los. Not going to interrupt me. I want. As Liz mentioned, our magistral on charge of Leo Fernandez on the topic of artificial intelligence, where we are, what's next. This is the topic where we're going to talk on the next couple of days. So I want to ask your patience while we set the stage. So I invite you all to take a cup of coffee or go to the bathroom before we start. ¿2024? ¿Dónde estamos? ¿Qué viene? Diego Fernández Slesak es doctor en ciencias de la computación. Es master en su doctorship. Se enfoca en la estimación de parámetros biológicos, modelos, en los que se ganan un precio. Se investiga entre los diferentes of neuroscience and intelligence, art, artificial intelligence. He received the prestigious award of Microsoft Faculty Fellowship. In 2023, he received the diploma of the merit of the Connex Foundation. Actually, he is developing as a independent researcher on the Institute of ICC in the Institute of Buenos Aires. As well, Diego is co-founder of Entela, a company dedicated to the process, automatic processing of information. Diego has the, we have the honor to present Diego Fernandez Lesac. Hello, okay. Thank you very much for the invitation. This is a pleasure to be here. As you see in the presentation, my background is on computation on the area of in artificial intelligence. And I always like the topic of interdiscipline, how art in intelligence or artificial intelligence can relate with different topics as the lawyer work that's very interesting for me so I'm very interested on in getting to know all of you and try to establish these new relationships and trying to get to let you know what's going on right now with the artificial intelligence right now in the world so we are going to start let's see if this works all right in 1996 there was a really important event on 
artificial intelligence. If we were in a small room, I will make questions to you, but Deep Blue in 1996 challenged the m champion chess player Kasparov. It was February 10, 1996, and around 4.45 of the afternoon, the computer playing white does this. Play 23 move. They have been playing against the blue and the computer moves the central pawn. You don't need to know a lot about chess. I'm going to tell you what is going here what, and why this is so important. The computer decides to move a pawn into a place that it's very easy to lose it. There's a tower attacking right in front of it. This pawn can be attacked in that position. And the first option for Caspo is to think that the machine made a mistake. They have been playing with this gesticulation. He thought about it a lot of time of this. He hold his head and he was trying to think, do I have to eat that? No, does the machine make a mistake or not? Kasparov was facing a very interesting situation in which he didn't know if the machine was going to be able to recover from that. So on the 23 move, he ate that pawn and the machine destroyed him afterwards, after this move. It was very interesting that this move is not the whole game, but this move Kasparov was interviewed after it and they asked him what happened, what is that caught your attention, that you changed how you were standing up, the face you were making. And I'm going to present uh, some of his interview, what he mentioned in the Time magazine, Kasparov answer on that particular move, it was a wonderful move and extremely human. I have played with different computers, but I have never experienced something like this. I could feel, I could smell that a new type of intelligence was sitting on the other side of the table. Gary Kasparov on like poetry in the way he wrote, he described the computer on that precise move as human. He can smell a new type of intelligence. It results that Kasparov won that game, that turn ship in 1996. He wins after that first game. How do you beat the computer? He was asked after that first beat. And he said, I start playing wrong. I went outside the books. I made some changes. I changed my style. And the computer couldn't adapt to that new way of playing. Kasparov was able to trick the machine, a machine that was able to make more than a hundred moves per minute. A year later, they play one more time in 1997 and Kasparov lost. In this time, it was something very different that in 1996, the blue 2.0 couldn't didn't process 100 million moves he could play 200 moves 200 million moves per minute and they start playing on the computer again playing the white moves at tower that it was a clear error it has its own name and Kasparov again starts thinking about it know what the machine is doing how can I do this. This is a mistake. There was a mistake. The computer loses that first game. Gary Kasparov says, well, now I have the road to start winning again, like I did in 1996 to the computer. And from that moment, the computer destroyed him on the rest of all the games. And there's a discussion where Gary Kasparov suggests that IBM could have make tricks if they could have adapted the computer 
to adopt it in 1997, but that it was demonstrated that in 1997 that when the machine made a mistake it was a mistake it was a code mistake the programmers the coders have programmed the machine when there were so many good player moves and plays the machine have an alarm in which it will make a random move and when it did, it didn't do of a good move, but just a random, and it was a mistake, and they corrected, so that w why afterwards it will win all of the, its games, and Gary Kasparov lost. It was impossible to beat the machine, and now every app of chess plays at this level. 20 years later, this event repeats itself. There was a pretty famous event. Now it was not IBM, it was Google DeepMind with Go. Go is the chess of Korea, Asia, and it has some simple instructions unlike chess it's not that complex but the expanse of decision that it has the game of go is bigger broader than chess so the computer intuition that needs the blue to go had were not enough so it took 20 years to repeat this event from chess to go. So what happened? Okay, we're going to move. What happened? In this game, the computer did a random move. Have been playing on a structure, Isidro, a Korean player, was surprised by this random move that the machine did trying to close his region. That's what you try to do on Go. Try to make this reins of yourself. So you do not try to play on all the board, but just on a region, specific region, trying to make your own reign. And this computer puts this stone on a random place far away on the board. And the player was very confused. You have n you'd never have to play like that. But Google DeepMind won at the end. There was no need of a second game. And they asked Isido what they have seen on that, what he saw on the computer that he was playing against with. And he answered, I thought AlphaGo was based on probability calculation and it was merely a machine. But when I saw this move, I changed my mind. Surely AlphaGo is creative. It took 20 years to repeat this milestone. And Seidel again talks about the intelligence of the machine and the impact of this makes so big of an impact that they have its own documentary that you can watch. So 10 years now that from that episode, it's now the rules of Go have changed. They are now being taught to children how to play this game, not just in these small regions, but to play with all the board like AlphaGo did. In 2017, there was a small change that was very important as much as in chess and in Go with both programs, they work on the next way. They were very experts on Go, experts in chess, the topic that they were start with, they were programmed to. but. You were trying to program them to play good. You can see the documentary that 
they tried to use these human beings that were expert to train the machine to teach me how well a move was or no. So by observing these moves and these games, they were trained so that they could improve and be better than humans. So in 2017, it was presented what was Alpha Zero, and this is what now we know as chat GPT and other generative AI. And Alpha Zero is the difference is that they are not longer using the experts of chess or Go, but they start learning by playing against each other. They show the instructions of Go, the instructions of chess, of the problem that you want to resolve. And somehow they turn this learning, this discipline into a challenge with itself and after millions of millions of games of AlphaGo against AlphaGo, from no knowledge, this is important, it's a neural, neural network that you start with no information and they start gaining information, correcting itself, and after a few weeks of training, on some thousand of computers, Alpha Zero is able to learn how to play, not only how to play, but better than all human beings, better than AlphaGo, the EA that was trained by experts and databases. That one lost against the computer that has been trained by itself without human help it not only allows us to generate EA with super human powers, but to learn the history of this uh, learning process. But Alpha Zero learn very similar to humans. And you can see that in the process of improvement that lasts a couple of weeks, it's very similar to the process of learning of humanity. So it's not only a tool of superhuman power, but of learning simulation of no previsible situations. So I'm going to talk about just the first one, no castling. So what happens if the towers didn't have a rock? That was not on the original chess instructions, but what it is on how human culture started developing these strategies it was always there, but it didn't have a name. So how was the learning process if you had never add that move to the books? So we can now explore scenarios and realities that are not the real one and to see how it will develop by itself. In 2023, we at the end have the generative AI, and it was very important with the addition of chat GPT. We have all started using this tool, and we never had the need of an expert like Gasparo. We are the experts now because this EA has access to our language. We know how, how to speak to it, and how we can access it so these motors of EA type better than all, though quicker they can translate, they can generate content. We all became experts from one day to another. And it's this is what Harari said, the AI now can trick or manipulate the operative system of human culture to acquire the language it's taking power over the key of civilization. In 2016, the computation, the EA, it's now creative. In 2023, in November of 2022, to be more precise, we now have the key of civilization, of human thought given to the machines and they know how to control it very well. So now I want to go a little bit more, and this has a really important footprint. 
Now we have just got two, one million users. This was the most quickly adapted technology. And now we want to ground this idea and how, how it developed from going from chess and go now to chat GPT and now how it works for us, how the computa computer can train itself in this world of language. We are going to do it with images because it's easier to understand. So what's an image? An image is just this group of little dots that you can say um, matrix, that's uh, rows that intersect each other with different colors. You may have lit heard red, green, blue. Each dot, it's a combination of yellow, blue, or red that has a number representing one of each colors. So I have to 156 blue, yellows, and blues. And if I combine them, I get a different color. There are some rules to play with this. Zero is black. And if all the colors are together is white. And there's 256, 256, 256. That gets white. And if you have the gray, they all need to be the same. So the gray is 128, 128, 128. With those numbers, I can represent any image. Each dot has this combination of three colors on the 256 that each one has. So each one of this represents that. So 256 times 226 and 256, we have 16 million of possible colors. In each square, I have 16 million options. So I can give a color to each one of you, and I have a lot of colors still to give. I need to give 16 million people a different color. If I combine these 16 million colors, I could even get first white, second white, third white, the combination of two colors has. 60 millions times 60 millions. That multiplication in two squares, I can give a different color. I can give a different color to each human being on the world. So now I take a picture. We have 112 times 112. I have this image of my face, for example, of 512 plus 512. How many images can I represent on that space? I can make views, faces, animals, small pictures, drawings. How many images can I represent in that space? If I do that, is this one 16 million exponential 512 times 512 on my image? This number is bigger than the quantity of atoms in the universe, you can pick anything. This is, number is enormous. And the capability of representation that a computer has in 512 times 512, it's just incredible. You need to believe me in this. This is incredible. I can represent all the cards, and I can recognize which one is. I can represent all faces. I can represent each people that have existed, that have already passed away, all present ones, when they were children and now they're adults, and the people that are going to be born yet, I can represent all of human history in that space. I have this bag of potential images it's what can I represent and what can I not. So imagine that I have this infinite bag. And now I put my hand there and I pick a random image. And this is something that a coder can make. 
and with random numbers. So I put my hand there. I have an image and what is going to show up myself in this scenery, giving a talk. What is the probability that there is a human being? It's zero. I can repeat that. And this is why is going to come up from that bag. This is what is going to come up, come out. How artificial intelligence makes that on this bag of infinite possibilities of images, how can they coordinate it and generate an image that are realistic at some extent, faces, cards, whatever you want. And that is what I was telling you before in 2017. It's a process of self-supervision that consists on the computer to train itself or compete against itself. So there's no human interaction. So this is an example that's very famous. In 2017, it was very famous. I give boring to ja chat GPT. So there's two networks. We have a a neural neural net that says what's the probability that what connects with other. So we have this data from the left and starts doing these multiplications by 0.5, 1.5, and then you have an amount of numbers that, and that can represent an image if it's RGB. What's the probability that I enter two numbers, make all these multiplications of these different circles, and I have this number and I get a face. That's what I told you. When I get my hand in that bag, I always get trash. We're going to get trash over and over again. On the right, it's a neuronal network. When you want to develop this image, you get this image of 512 times 512. And you need to insert a one or two. What image do you want to get? So. It is generated by a real face that I enter or generated by IA. So I need to combine this network that makes trash, but I want to make faces and the other one that can discriminate if I want to create something or if I already have something that I have in mind. So this becomes like a chess game in which the computer makes this infinite times trying to combine all that I have in this infinite bag. So this is style gun, as it is known. And it's a very simple network that you can train on a desktop computer. And I can do that on my office computer. It's not very hard. So you have public images that come from typically Facebook or, or other databases. You made it train itself, compete with itself. And when they were trying to make computers, trying to put a face and the other one detects if this comes from something real or it needs to be generated. So this is a very interesting website that you can get into. That's called This Person Does Not Exist. You can put a number, a random number, and then it shows a face. But there are from people that do not exist. They're not pictures. They're combinations of 512 times 512 pixels with colors random at some extent on which a statistic an analysis on that 512 times 512, you can get this image. So I think that this person is very similar to a college friend that I had. You can do this. You can access this from your cell phones and you will get a random face. And it's not a picture. It's not a database 
these people do not exist and it's not based on a picture that has been made some changes no it's this bag that i can put my hand in and take something there's some strange things you can see that there's a lady that it's it looks good we can all agree that this is a human being um also it is not because we that person does not exist but you can see that her earrings are not sim are not the same can you see that this is a hallucination i don't say that people do not wear this kind of earrings but this is a hallucination so the statistic of the face in some details you can see with some differences that are not coherent there are some facts that people with asymmetrical earrings are at some extent there so the computer said women wear earrings more often than men you can see that this on this side there's only one earring but there's is this hallucination in what it didn't show up the same earring on both ears if you can see on eva her both earrings her both ears are not equal those are some hallucinations that are given in e every generated model being chat gpt or an image generator so i wanted to show you an exercise that i did in my computer this is a friend of mine that works on health issues she's a psychologist and on the right there's an image that i took from this infinite bag and you can see that when i pick this i can start mixing i can start looking for the most similar to lucia that i can so this is what i did there is the changes that i you can see how the background is adapting how the hair color is changing there are some versions of britney spears if you were able to notice there was like a britney spears over there why there was britney spears because she's very similar at the beginning so this is trained by internet pictures and there are many pictures of britney spears so when you try to fix this bag i have so many pictures so when i try to take a picture i don't get a picture of britney spears but one that is statistically very similar to it so you can see how it starts adapting and changing and you can see there are some hallucinations there is a lifting there is more strength in her hair so i find a image that is similar but not exactly the same so what you have to believe to me is that on the left there's it's a picture and that's on the back if i could look with enough time i will find the same exact one it's just an amount of time until i find it so i get to very similar on this example so now what happens when i don't have a picture of lucia i have a number that when i then when it goes through this network what happens it's a similar pix some quantity of pixels that are similar so what happens if i move through the age in that bag if i try to go older so i start having these differences now i have glasses why because after 40 we have presbycia and we start using glasses so when i start going older there are some objects hallucinations associated to what other pictures have so i can do with other political not so correct examples i can try to connect each other so what happened if i marry lucia what our children will look like so me with more hair more younger in the middle people with more fluid gender at the left we have very feminine at the left 
right, very masculine. So this is a way of how we can try to explore new universes. And this is the work for you lawyers, know if it's correct or not. So what tools do you know? I think that you all have heard DALI. It was DALI 2 a while ago. Now it's DALI 3. Mid-journey and one in the academy. World is very used, stable diffusion. On the text generators, we have Google Bar. Now it's Google Gemini and ChatGPT with all of the impressions. And there are like 47 of this. And in the workshop of tomorrow, we're going to see more. Now there are voice generators, music generators. The characteristic that they have in common is that the beginning, the input. I talk about numbers that multiply themselves and show pictures. Those numbers are known as prompt. They need a human input. I need to put my hand on the infinite bag with a random number. In the ChatGPT example, there's a number on w that is what I write, the question that I make to the chat. That breaks into small pieces called tokens. That's the keyword. And every chatbot has its own way of break. Some in syllables, some in letters. Some have tokens that are not syllables or letters. They have their own symbols. There are some punctuation, others. And this breaks the phrase that I insert. And those parts are translated into numbers, into a vector. And each token, each piece of what I wrote transforms into a number exactly the same as the image generator. There's no difference. The token is the pixel of the image. So I can translate into a number as RGB or how I do the input to get the image the same way the text is broken into parts, into tokens, and these tokens. So we are going to play a little bit. If there are some Argentinians here, you can help me with this. This is a very famous quote of Maradona's game against the British. So Maradona, in a memorable run in the play of all time, blank, blank, what planet did you come from? Barrilete Cosmico, that's what it's called. So what happens if I put this prompt into ChatGPT? Chat I can do it with Jamados, that is the version of Facebook, that says Mamaradona in a memorable run in the play of all time on June 22, 1986, at the Estadio Azteca in Mexico. So it was correct. It was Mexico. It talked about 1986, the Azteca Stadium. It's talking about Maradona. Clearly, is working. What do you need to take from this? This doesn't help to look something. Because this is not what I was looking for. That's our quote that every Argentinian, almost everyone, could answer. And this is the answer of Turbo Instruct. That's the public of ChatGPT. So it says the same, memorable one, the play of all time, the goal of the century in 1986, the stadium. This is something reasonable, but it's not what I was looking for. Because you had to have Barrilete Cosmico in that to fill in this quote. So what you need to take from this is that you cannot take any factual statement as true from this. You can generate content, but you cannot look for it content. So again, it's not just to write, it's what happens when I erase a part of this image. Adobe Firefly decided to fill it with sky and the fingers are closed. And if I do it on Photoshop, they put something that eats on its database of training. So there's this ball. So these tools have 
these tools is just beginning. So what can we do to incorporate it? So I have a lot of experience in the health area. And you can talk more about laws and intellectual property. But how can we incorporate these advances if we cannot trust in the factual data that it gives to us? We can trust that the punctuation was going to be OK, that the translation is going to be OK. So I want to show a strategy that we are developing in the Buenos Aires University in the So what can I do to use the information that we already have? We know that it has hallucinations. We know that the information is not to look for. How can we transmit this and join it and adopt it? We use that we're adopting it, adopting these technologies with all the protection that it needs, for example, in the, in the health area. So one thing that we did with juridical assessment, we have our governance assessment, is the lawyer of the governor. So everything that is signed has some kind of identification goes through this ministry and they tell the governor if it's OK or not and they have like a million files and if can be just a vacation report or something very serious for the country. So the biggest concern that they have is that that one, a million files is so hard to f look for something there because you had just this search by words so how can we improve this was their question, like in chat GPT to look for, I don't want to work normative 156. So I want to look the normative related to petroleum. And in that way, I can get all the files that may not include that specific word in them, but are related to that topic. So we developed this search website that inside of it, you do not have to look by similarity on words, but similarity of content. I could put a prompt and it tokens itself, as I was mentioning, and we compare these vectors to the vectors of the different files that we have there. So if there is a million files, there are 20 people there, plus the 200 ones that are assisting them. So we need to make this very much easy for the government and the municipalities. So where are we going? This is the first step. I can create files automatically. And in the next couple of minutes that I have, how can we create content and to look in these databases and to create content? So I want to tell you some details in the health area that's very important to me. So the limitation of patient access, increased cost for patients and diagnostic accuracy. So sometimes you need to go to a neurologist and it took months for you to get an appointment and the cost for that appointment, especially for one, it's very high. And looking to any statistic, the accuracy, it's pretty bad. And that happens in different specialties. The accuracy, it's not that good. And especially when we have this junior physicians that are being trained still. So we need to support these doctors and physicians to give a better service to their patients and their diagnostics. So we have a new culture that we are this. If we want to eat, we do it over the phone. If we want to move, we take an over. 
in the health area, we are far away from that. We still call to ask for an appointment. When you get like a video call with a doctor, they have to see you, you need to talk to them, you both need to be there connected. So we're pretty far away from a computer giving you a diagnostic. It's very small, the region that it is capable to give you a diagnostic. And the one that is authorized, for example, in the United States, to give you an add-on a diagnostic, like the only one it's approved one is one that can tell you if you are diabetic. So in this scenery, it's in which we move and now we have ChatGPT. ChatGPT is very dangerous as I have shown you. There is a picture, I tell you about the Maradona quote and to move forward, let's picture now a medical protocol. So we that are working in research programs, we need to work on some gaps, specific gaps. So we show these pictures, the reports that we work with. We have a thorax plaque, and that's very persistent in all of the world health systems, but it does not go anywhere. It is not It's very rare that one of these is requested. So you need to read this when you're a student and it's pretty bad because you're not used to use it. So we are trying to get artificial intelligence to give support on the diagnosis on this for a specialist. Again, in cancer for mammographies, trying to quantify the areas of the brain that are not capable of just at sight. So this can be very helpful to assess doctors on the triage, precision, and for example, in triage, that you need to get this information and typically you don't. So now we have AI how we can access it is not on a neural network, but you do the input through a bot. We are evaluating and assessing something that we would like to happen. What happens if a patient wants to access to a neurologist because of a cephalia that could be migraine? What happens with, this, with those patients? They do a quality test if they have sleep well, if they have gone to work, if they, uh, several questions that they need to be asked. What happens if I get in the middle with a chat GPT that before I go to the doctor, make this test of quality of life and I will help you get the index of it and then go with the neurologist with that information already established. So. The patient already has this image. The doctor receives it, means this information and the appointment could be more effective. So we are trying to make this go through a medical protocol, of course, first. In the detection of a screening of melanomas, not in I'm not talking this about in big cities, but in rural areas, there are different types of skin cancer. I th there are several tools that could screen by the camera of a cell phone if there is if there is something that needs to be seen by a, a specialist or no. This is called their moscopic images. So to finish, how we continue with this generative intelligence on images, for example. So I talk about radiography, x-rays to detect some areas in the brain, these chats in the middle between the patient and the doctor. 
so there are other images. So this, you can see this is a violinist. There's a violin being operated of a brain tumor. And what they were trying to do is to extract the tumor without affecting the capacity or the ability of this person to play the violin. So what they did was to make the surgery with him awake. So you need to play the violin while we do the surgery. And when we find the place where your, that moves your hands, I will try to extract the tumor from other way. So this is a practice that it's been done for about 10, 15 years. And when it is on the motor side, I can say you can move the fingers. When it's on the other side, that it's the emotional side, it's not so easy. How do I tell the person, be happy all the time? So I want to know when I break your happiness. So what we are doing is using this AI to make emotion identification threshold. So when you are close to someone that's related to you, we can determine some emotions pretty easily. In some milliseconds, you can tell if a person is scared, it's tired, it's happy. So what we ask the patient, it's a picture of a person that they appreciate. We put it through their network. We change it and modify in the way that we like. Surprise, disgust, love, and, and that way we can s silence the parts of our brains that feel that, the six main emotions described by psychiatry, and then make a surgery from a side that do not alter that kind of behavior. So finishing up, what I want you to take with yourselves, it's no to technological obscurantism. It's something that I want to be very intentional with. You don't need to know mathematics. You don't need to be a coder. You can take an idea of how this works, and this makes us better users, and that is related with abilities for ubiquitous generative AI. So if we can go safe through the borders, teaching children, being safe. So please, no to technological obscurantism. This is an obvious skill that we will need to hold and embrace in technology. So applied AI, it's AI is being applied to different segments. For me, it's a lot of images. And at last, trends, how we use this in the generation of content, in chatbots, when we need to fulfill some norms, for example, a medical protocol or detection of emotions. So nothing more to add. Thank you very much. Diego, muchísimas gracias. Diego, thank you very much for this introduction to the world of artificial intelligence, generative artificial intelligence. Sadly, because of time, we cannot open the space for Q&A, but I, I, I believe we're going to have a great opportunity tomorrow during a closure activity that Diego is going to lead, and it's like a hands-on workshop to be able to know different practices in artificial intelligence and be able to enter these models that Diego has anticipated, and we're going to be able to discuss a little bit deeper this is going to be very entertaining and it's it's for us to to it is we want it to be interactive and to be able to talk and and not just uh, a presentation and diego i would like to 
ask a question to make this closure of this first introduction. And this is, we have two years of this jump to generative artificial intelligence that has been democratized if we want to see it in this way. ChatGPT and other models. The question is where or what do you foresee for this coming five years? Where, where are we going to be placed? I see two futures, one closer and one further with a lot of uncertainty. We, we talk about it during breakfast. In the nearest future, I would like to tell you that this is just starting. We don't know the power of this new artificial intelligence for, from whatever corporation. It could be ChatGPT from OpenAI or Gemini. We, we don't know the potential, the fun, full potential yet. Next couple of years is going to be an explosion, an exponential explosion of new things that can be done from from this. We're in the tip of the iceberg. We started a year and a half ago. So that's the closer future. Um, I'm not too clear where we're getting to, but I something's clear that we just, we're just starting and every day it's going to be deeper and deeper in our daily activities. And then in the future, there is a developer of artificial intelligence, Jan Le Kuhn, that a year and a half got a Nobel Prize of uh, technology because of deep learning. And John LePun got this question asked several times, and I agree with him. It's very controversial. What he said is, uh, "It's deep learning is, is done. We already know what it's able to do. Whatever assignment you have, assignments, text, whatever y you can think of, I'm going to be able to put it in a network complex enough on how this circles and lines, but I'm going to make it as good or, or better than humans. This is something that it's been done, and it's it's a way of thinking about it. What we will see in the next couple of years is a change of paradigm. What, what do we do if we're in the search of a general artificial intelligence, not generative, but general, where we can think more about free will, effective intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence that we're not just artificial intelligences that do specific things because deep learning is the, the world champion, but is able to have a conscious, and if the computer can be self-conscious, so the proposal is to go back to the basics of artificial intelligence in 1950s, where all the logic and uh, conceptions of reasoning were not coming from this neural connections that were simulating uh, a brain, but those who are combining this is spectacular tools like deep learnings, but with more abstract things. So the future for me in the next five to 10 years is how to make it, to put it in a new place of development to integrate all of these technologies. I also think that you were talking about the other day what is it being fed? What for? And then about five years ago, I, I forget about the name of the article, but the machines are here not today as conquerors, but, but as creators. We see it as creators right now, but are, are we going to see a, a future of machines as conquerors? In the world of artificial intelligence, the more scientific community is talking about are we going to an apocalyptic 
future where machines are going to destroy us, or I personally think of of a positive way on integration as creators, um, artificial intelligence as creator and not conqueror. But I don't have many arguments. It's more so a, a feeling that I believe that the good usage of this technology will take us to good places. And we, if we get to do it in in a good way, we can avoid the bad places. Some are very evident. So my place is optimistic that we're going to get to a society that is hybrid, coexisting with artificial intelligence. And that's why we should say no to the technological darkness. So we have a lot to talk about in the next couple of days. In the next panel, we're gonna see artificial intelligence and in the next um, in the next couple of topics that we're gonna see, we're gonna be able to connect it in a very specific way and we're gonna be able to see, to finish with Diego this event And hopefully we can challenge him on how to like answer some questions and, and encourage us to continue. Thank you, Diego. You've given us a very good vision of this tool and this technological reality. And I want all of you to give him a round of applause. Hola otra vez. Hi again. I hope you're enjoying this time. I ask you for a minute of your attention. You're all welcome to our coffee break. If you wish, you can have a cup of coffee while we wait for our next panel. Enjoy your free time. Thank you for your attention. Coffee break is going to be between five to ten minutes. We're behind. We apologize for that. So please, um, there is also there is also something else that is going to be shared with you. Hi, everyone. Don't forget that we're collecting shoes for the campaign. Donate your shoes. Leave your um, Mark, and there is also uh, a way to donate uh, in cash if you wish to. Please, we hope to see you with your contribution. Thank you.